All right, I guess we're live. Uh, so I don't expect many people to actually attend this while it's live, but I was interested in trying to take um, the power of the internet and the ability to record screens. Um, and, and I've essentially wanted to, to show people how I use the product, uh, specifically Passive Total. Um, and I wanted to do that live just to, to be able to answer questions, but also just to see how, how these controls actually operate. So you're not going to be seeing much of me uh, throughout this actual live presentation. Uh, but what it is that I'm going to be focusing in on here is the passive total interface, specifically um, looking for uh, taking the open source indicators that we have from FireEye uh, and expanding those out into a project uh, that we can save that information and then look um, you know, look at these threat actors how they as they evolve. So um, I actually see that we do have some viewers here. I have no clue who they are, but um, essentially, you know, I'm I run product for Risk IQ. I'm one of the co-founders for Passive Total. Uh, my other co-founder, Steve, is in Memphis. Uh, and essentially, um, you know, I wrote Passive Total, and then Steve uh, helped with the the business side of the the uh, the product as well. Uh, and then we sold over to Risk IQ. So. I don't want to spend too much time talking about that. Instead, I'm just going to go directly into building out the investigation for the temp uh, periscope actors. So what I'm going to do now is actually share out my screen. And OK, what we can see here should be my, uh, my project pane inside of RiskIQ. And I'm going to briefly take a moment to go over to the FireEye article. This is what came out yesterday. I uh, saw this on Twitter, thought it was uh, really interesting that the Chinese espionage group is uh, targeting various folks inside of Cambodia ahead of some 2018 elections. So they give some nice background, uh, some uh, interesting background on the incident as well. You know, I think a lot of people will just kind of skip to the bottom and look for indicators of compromise. But this background information becomes really important, especially as I'm doing an investigation. So we can see here that there were two servers and they actually indicate which ones they were. Uh, we're functioning as a typical command and control where we see this mcldailynews.com as a scan box server. That's important just because it gives me context um, as to what, you know, when I'm looking at the data that might appear different. So rather than having to surmise that by just looking at the data itself, I, I can walk into my investigation by knowing that these two command and control servers um, were not running Scanbox, where the other one was. Uh, so there's some more information here about the targeting, um, some of the specific details around the downloaders and droppers. Uh, but at this point, what I would typically do is, after going through the actual article content, I want to take out the um, pieces of infrastructure that we're going to be expanding. So in the background that you won't be able to see, I have a notepad file where I'm just going to copy these out very quickly. Let's see. Okay, so I got those all copied. And then what I do is uh, I'm going to go into the interface here. I'm going to generate a new project. We'll make it a public one. And we'll call this uh, FireEye well, live stream FireEye temp periscope. Normally, I would give a, a more detailed description than I'm about to. Um, well, we'll just we'll throw in the, uh, the blog link so we have a reference here. And I'll tag it as such, uh, espionage, China, Cambodia, uh, thread, APT. Right now, I'll just keep it to myself. So I'm going to submit this, and uh, we get a blank project here that uh, doesn't have anything in there. So we're going to go and add those artifacts that we got from the FireEye blog. Uh, and we're going to tag them as well, just uh, with uh, some generic tags here. Uh, apt uh, temp periscope uh, China, and you'll see that I'm inputting them in fanged. Uh, we'll actually strip that out. So after submitting those, I now have them 
essentially within my project. And I want to go and persist that concept around the this specific website, mlcdailynews.com, being used as a scam box uh, server. So I'm going to add scam box to this. Make sure that we submit that tag. That just helps us kind of remember that in the future as we're going through. I'm going to set the monitoring on all of these. Now, I already know that these are bad, so I'm going to mark them as such. That way I get the added benefit of the malicious tag and then seeing this red colored uh, table row in the future. And this is really where the fun sort of begins. I'm effectively just going to run a query on each one of these items, and I'm going to let these results load. You'll see I'll just kind of page through these, um, make sure that we get all results. And so what we'll do is uh, we'll start by essentially, man, this Hangouts is really killing the lag here. OK. So we can see right away, uh, we have a couple IP addresses associated with this uh, chemsclary.com. We have some who is information. You know, normally this is just how I'm going to go through and I'll talk out loud as I'm going through the interface itself. So I, I pivot over to who is. I start selectively clicking through the different dates and identify if there is an exposed who is server uh, or who is information. There's nothing here. Name servers aren't particularly interesting. So I'm going to skip over this. Right away, I uh, have 13 subdomains, which means I now have 13 points of interest that I might want to go investigate further. So I'm actually going to select uh, all of these. And FireEye didn't specifically mention uh, which subdomains were being used in the attack. They just gave the, the primary domain. That may have been all the attackers were using. So as a result, I'll actually just mark these as suspicious um, and treat them as subdomains on the tag. I'm going to submit those to make sure that we have that information. And then what I'm going to do is actually add them to my project. Um, do a live stream, make sure that we get those inside of the project. Uh, so we'll explore those in a moment. Uh, we can see here that despite FireEye not mentioning the specific subdomains, you can see here that our Risk IQ crawlers have actually gone through some of these before and have detected either a server um, or a specific technology running on the, uh, the page. So I can see here that there was an online forum um, or some sort of XMB running on this chemscalery.com. On the webmail um, subdomain, I can see that it was, it was using a font awesome at some point, suggesting that there might have been a website there. Uh, if I go over to hashes, uh, we have a emerging threats proof point hash here. Not particularly interesting. If I wanted to go to VirusTotal, I might be able to do that, but I don't have a VirusTotal account hooked up. Uh, what we can do is go over to our open source intelligence. What we're going to see here is just information that was published from yesterday uh, because this went live. DNS-wise, not much unique information here. Uh, standard name cheap hosting. What is interesting is the uh, cookies concept. So. Looking at cookies, again, you know, not specifically mentioned, but the cPanel subdomain appears to have been co pushing cookies uh, as, as well as the web uh, mail uh, subdomain as well. So chances are uh, running round cube, maybe these were maybe these were automatically set up by the hosting provider um, and they just got a default web mail uh, set up associated with them. Not entirely clear. Um, okay, but still interesting, right? Like we, you know, if I really wanted to, and I thought that these were particularly uh, unique, I could actually run a pivot on them. Most of these look fairly normal. Uh, one of the pivots that I can do right away, however, is just a pivot on the domain itself um, and see if there's any information, uh, further information we can glean from this. So let's let these load up. Nothing new here, it's the same results and same IP address. So we're just looking at the domain. We ran a pivot here to look for any cookies that were delivered on this particular domain or from this domain. Uh, again, nothing on this one, same IP, nothing, and nothing. Okay, so 
not particularly interesting here. Uh, however, you know what? Let's add it uh, to our project anyway. In the event that it does become interesting, we'll want to make sure that we've at least um, checked that off our box. I'm going to add both of these in. You can see that I'm actually doing a control find within the browser. I have so many projects that uh, it's difficult for me to, to essentially quickly find them until we get a filter dialog in place. Uh, I got to just do it the old hacky way. OK, so we know that this, um, this infrastructure has been active. We know that it's malicious. We've tagged it. We got two IP addresses here. Um, I'm going to load up the results and then check to see what we got going on there because everything else for this particular domain appears to be a dead end. So at this point, um, that I mentioned the hashes. I don't have a, a virus total account. I'll probably just mark this uh, inside of our project anyway for the in the event that I want to go back through virus total and check for these things. And now I'm going to exit out of this particular domain because I basically have that covered. All right. So we got the IP address here right away. Looking at the heat map, I can see that we're dealing with like roughly 250 associations every single day. Uh, those orange little flags are indicating that something new is showing up every day. This to me, uh, right off the bat, is either going to be a sinkhole um, or it's going to be some sort of parked provider. So I'm not going to spend too much time even analyzing this. I'm going to tag it as parked. Uh, simply as I go through the rest of the investigation, I want to make sure that I'm not going to run into these IP addresses again that are essentially just going to waste my time. Um, you know, really depends on how much time you want to dedicate to looking at this sort of stuff. Some of these domains certainly could be of interest. Um, however, just for the sake of time, I don't want to spend too much going into these, uh, these IP addresses simply because it's way too much stuff here, and I don't think it's related. So similar uh, IP address again, number of resolutions happening on a regular basis. Given the shorter time frame here, you know, could potentially be a sinkhole um, that somebody stood up, uh, but it could just be a parked page as well. So I'm going to mark it as such and move on. OK, so we're on to our next uh, malicious domain. This is our scam box domain here. So we got a new IP address that was not one of the name cheap ones we had previously seen. Again, go back over to who is information. I'm going to click and pivot through this. Nothing of use. Uh, we do have some SSL certificates, so expanding one of those out does show a common name of the website we know is bad, so I'm going to run a pivot on that in the background. Move over to our subdomains tab again, um, mark this as suspicious, and mark it as a subdomain. And add it into our project for a live stream. Uh, we have some, this case just running a same server technology, running an Apache server, nothing too super interesting here. OSINT information again, uh, stuff that we saw reported yesterday does not look like anything in particular. DNS, uh, we already got that mail server covered, so I'm not going to spend too much time there. No cookies. So it looks like the real avenue of, of investigation here is the certificates. Uh, and the resolutions. And right off the bat, we can see that there's no infrastructure associated with these certificates. However, let's go ahead and jump over to them anyway um, and quickly run adding them to our project. I want to add the SHA ones and then the serial number. The reason why I'm doing this is just in case anything shows up in the future. So let's expand this other one out. We can actually see that the serial numbers are the same, so I'm not going to bother adding those in every time. Let's add in the other SHA-1. And we'll add in this SHA-1. Okay, so at this point, no avenues there, no infrastructure. We have our um, pivot on the IP address. Starting to look like a park domain to me. Uh, again, longevity of having data been around. A lot of associations, a lot of unique ones on an everyday basis. Again, I'm probably not going to spend too much time on this. I'm going to mark it as parked just to move on um, and save myself some time. So, take stock of what we got here. Not a lot so far. Um, looking like some pretty slim infrastructure outside of a couple subdomains and certificates.
So we'll move on to our next malicious domain. Uh, we got more IP addresses. I'm going to do a quick refresh just in case I already handled one of these. Let's see if those IP addresses were any of the ones that we had said that are uh, parked. So we can save ourselves a click. Nope. Okay, so what I'm going to do is while I'm taking a look at this information, I'm actually going to go through and uh, investigate just uh, like load those passive DNS results in the background. Let's take a look at who is. Nothing interesting. Got some certificates again. And referencing our common name, so I'm going to pivot on that. No subdomain in this case. Um, Component-wise, what do we got? Just running an Apache server. Not that interesting. FireEye open source intelligence. Got some more DNS records here, but nothing calling out other than the use of Cloudflare, which we know is something that, that malicious actors will do, uh, but not a lot of leads here, not, not looking too, uh, too promising. So having ran the pivot, uh, I'm gonna close this one out. Looks like another parked one, so let's mark it. Let that out, another parked, mark it. This is the nice thing about uh, the six month visual is that it instantly can kind of give me an idea of whether or not I'm looking at something parked or, you know, in this case, a Cloudflare IP, which it's natural. We should expect to see a high volume of unique infrastructure showing up on it on a daily basis. Again, another Cloudflare IP. So we'll actually appropriately mark that as CDN, Content Delivery Network. Uh, and then we're gonna move on. So let's take these SSL certs, expand them out. Both of them match. Let's add them into our project. Oh, the scrolling. There we go. We got that in there. Oh man, I wish my find would work. Try this again. There we go. And the serial number. Let's get the uh, SHA-1 again. Serial number. Did it match? Yes. Not too interesting. Close it out. All right, on to the next one. So uh, refresh again just in case on the uh, IP addresses. See if we've already marked them as parked. We have not. Let's go run a pivot on it in the background. Take a look at who is information. Nothing of interest here. Again, certificate. Pivot on that. Got one other subdomain, just a standard mail one. Mark it as such. For the project. Got some components. Running Apache again. Nothing useful. Um, and just open source intelligence, probably from yesterday's reporting. DNS, name cheap, nothing interesting. So uh, you can see here, I'm going through this pretty quick, but this is how I generally treat all projects. Uh, I do first passes until things become interesting, and so far this is pretty boring. So looking like parked. Mark it. There are certificate stuff in here. All right, do the got a match on serial there, match on serial there. So we'll just add in the SHA-1. Okay. So at this point, I'm gonna refresh the project itself. And now we went from those four domains to a bunch of infrastructure. So at this point, I went through and did a cursory pass on the infrastructure. And now what I'd like to do is go through and actually look at those subdomains. So lucky me has already tagged them as such, which makes it easy for me to essentially go back through and uh, run the queries against this infrastructure. I can also uh, just reference anything uh, that has a system tag. Actually, in this case, I don't have one set up there. So let's just run the uh, queries here on all of our additional infrastructure. 
make sure that I got everything here. It all tagged appropriately. Yeah, it is. Okay. So let's run the queries on these. It does look like I got a little error here because I know that some of these other domains that I did, oh, there it is. Ah, uh, subdomains versus subdomain. Shame on me. So we got these right here. We'll actually go back through and modify them really quick. And we will remove the subdomain tab. And the subdomains tag. Okay. Now I'm going to kill my browser by loading up all of these results. And the whole purpose of this is just going through, um, you know, the infrastructure to see if it's different. Again, the fact that we have subdomains here means that we could have different paths of DNS, um, different hashes, etc. So it's important to go through all of these, even though it's a bit tedious. So. Looking right away, um, we already know that we can skip through the who is, we can skip certificates, we can skip subdomains, we can skip largely every single thing here except for hashes, um, and this should make it pretty quick to go through the infrastructure. So we've already marked the IP address as park, so we can skip that. Looking at hashes, we've already added that hash, so I'm moving on. We've already handled this. Everything else should be the same. Um, this is a new IP address. So this update.chemscaler.com, I'm gonna run a pivot on there because this is now something new uh, that we hadn't seen. Everything else will be the same, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Okay, so these are passive DNS results. We can see here right away on the infrastructure, we're running with way less unique data um, in a much smaller period of time, suggesting that the IP address hasn't been used that often. Um, and we can see here that the results that we're looking at appear to be very similar to that which we were just analyzing. So I came from, the these are known, so this is again the beauty of marking things uh, as you're going along is all of these are new to me. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is take note of this. I'm gonna mark them as suspicious because this is weird that we have a similar looking infrastructure when an IP address that is seen hosting something we know is malicious um that's that's uh that and it looks very similar to the uh to the the domain that we started with so let's say um pdns overlap because that's what we have here so we're going to mark that and let's add them to our project as well and while we're at it let's mark this ip address as suspicious and um, put subdomain usage. So we can keep that later. Um, and what we'll do is we'll add this one to our project as well. Okay. So now at this point, we've accounted for everything here. Um, we do have this OSINT uh, tab. Okay. So uh, some blog here that could be interesting. So some bad flick, which reading uh, some of the FireEye reporting, I know that might be related, so I'm gonna open that in the background. Um, and we did see some cookies here. So we have cookies that are being deployed. Um, PHP session ID from the IP address itself, this update.wsconf.com hyperhost.name and chemscale, which looks strikingly similar to our initial starting point. I'm not gonna mark these quite yet because we can always go back. I'm not immediately sure if they're valuable. Uh, let's pivot over to this blog really quick. So we got a blog here from March 30th of this year. Um, okay, this is helpful. Temp Periscope, uh, Periscope Group, um, which does give me some hope that this might be related. Um, there's a reference to original reporting from FireEye. March 16, 2018, Temp Periscope, um, TTPs and malware used. Okay. Some indicators here of hashes, but not any infrastructure, unfortunately. 
So it looks like this blog is essentially going over the uh, actor's malware that was used or observed in that attack. So, okay, this is this becomes interesting. So, uh, IP address found is the command and control server. Let's take a note of that. And um, what we'll do is we'll actually fire up a nice new window in the background here. Open that up. And let's run a search for that IP address. So we could see, all right, reference to the IP address, resolve to. So we got some reference to that W, that M cough, which we found on that IP address, which they mentioned here, this 185, 174, 173, 157. So that's why this OSINT report hit, because that IP address was found within this reporting. Now, what's cool about this is we started with the temp periscope actors. We got this 185, 174 address, which then we have open source intelligence saying that's related to temp periscope. We already know that. But now we have this new IP address, this 103.243, that's actually related to the temp periscope actors as well. And so if I go onto that, we can see here that there was a passive DNS overlap of this uh, wsmcough.com. Okay, so at this point, I know that this is bad or it's been used in a bad state. Um, because it's an IP address, it's not necessarily bad, so I'm gonna mark it as such. And I'm gonna say previous reporting. Um, and I'm gonna tag that as some PDNS overlap as well. Because we know the fact that we're seeing update.wsmconf.com that when we eventually go through and explore that infrastructure, we would have come across this uh, IP address anyway. So I'm going to tag it, add it to our project. Um, and while we're here, we may as well look at the other details. Uh, we have a certificate. I'm going to pivot on it just in case. Could be of interest. There's uh, not much information here. Looking at the host pairs, we have this EG non 9 Dot com. We got a dynamic DNS that's been blacklisted, at least by Risk IQ. So immediately, I would probably want to consider marking this uh, domain. While we're here, let's just quickly take a look at it um, and make sure that there's nothing of interest. Let's also backtrack really quick here since we got some certificate hits. When was this issued? Issued in 2009, appears to be some sort of self-signed certificate, probably not useful. Um, so the years on this, 10-year, probably going to be a dead end, but we'll keep it in, um, you know, we'll run the pivots anyway. Why not? So same serial number used um, against these certificates that were issued earlier. That 90 or more IP address association signifies to me it's probably some sort of hosting provider. Having just one IP address, however, is probably pretty interesting. So you can see here I'm running a lot of threads. Um, okay. Not too particularly interested in whatever this is. It's going through and running, running this to ground very quickly. Uh, all right, if I wanted to explore it, let's kill off that for the moment. We got some Google Analytics trackers that are associated with an IP address that references these, uh, looks like Thai websites. I don't know if these are real or not. Kill off the trackers for a moment. Let's see what we have on these. All right, so right away, looking at these two websites, these Thai-based websites, Loading so many results, I can't even keep up. Immediately, uh, I'm seeing close to eight years of history, um, which tells me we're probably not dealing with something that is malicious. Uh, if I flop over to the open source tag, I can see that there's just a raw link out to the website um, and some, let's see here, what this is, maybe it's a conference. Let that load. Again, this other Thai based website, close to 10 years of history. A lot of infrastructure here. Uh, briefly clicking around. I don't really think that this is malicious. This is probably legitimate. 
Um, okay, so what is IBO? International Biology Olympiad. Okay, so not not something that you know China might be uh, might be interested in going after this. Let's see if what we were looking at this one right here is featured here. It is directly. Okay, so this is the Thai Biology Olympiad. I'm going to venture to say this is not malicious. So I'm going to close that out. So we didn't run that completely to ground, but I don't think that that is of interest on the certificate front there. So let's skip past that one for the moment. All right, um, let's look. We uh, will earmark this uh, dynamic DNS page. I'll come back to it later. This was a, this was a helpful URL. So I actually want to go back and update my project to include that, some OSINT reporting. Submit that. Now we can close it out and walk away. This one was not helpful, but again, for posterity stick, let's go and update the project so we have it in the future. We. Good. Let's go back exploring the subdomains that we were dealing with before. Uh, we know nothing that we need. We don't really need to explore any of these tabs except for hashes and the passive DNS. So nothing new here, closing it out. Get that IP address, let it load. Um, we've already parked this one, nothing interesting, moving on. Uh, we have not parked this one, but that name cheap suggests to me that we're probably gonna be parking it. Move on. So this was the IP address for that subdomain. I don't know, less stuff here, but certainly still a smaller hosting provider. Um, let's look at the content of a lot of a lot of hosting stuff that does not appear as interesting. Um, theme wise, not seeing a lot of big theme overlap. Pretty significant time frames of, of having history for this IP address. New registrar information, a lot of hashes on it. So maybe a, not necessarily certain if these are malicious, but could be of interest. Checking at our host pairs. We have this 91 IP address that was that redirected to the 192. Oh, let's see the OSINT side. All right, so what's this guy? Oh, are we just looking at a, I think we're looking at a damn non-routable address. Good Lord, this is what happens when you look at data too much. This is useless. Logging away. Okay. Um, that 91 becomes way less interesting now. Okay, so this, figure out where we are now. So this was the IP address that was resolving the FTP to, or FTP.chem, scalar.com is resolving to this. Again, uh, so we got a name cheap server, but we have way less results. A lot of hashes here, a lot of cookies. Let's take a look at the cookies, see if it can suggest uh, what we might be viewing. A lot of different high level stuff that's not particularly interesting. And the fact that I'm seeing so many uh, items here leads me to believe that we're probably not dealing with something that's malicious. This looks like a shared host, not liable to take the hashes seriously. Uh, open source intelligence, not much value. Let's look at the certs, see if they tell a different story. Nothing interesting. All right, so web-hosting.com. Okay, this could explain why we're seeing the overlap. I'm gonna go with my gut here and say that this IP address, we're gonna mark it as parked, even though it's not high traffic, um, because it doesn't appear to be particularly interesting for our investigation. So let's close it out. There's that damn uh, route, like non-routable address, mark it. Got one that's already parked. Nothing of interest here, okay. Uh, Netherlands uh, IP address for the catalog dot uh, chem scaler. So this one looks interesting. Um, doesn't necessarily seem to be following a pattern here of you know what the Chinese might be doing, but this is interesting. Um, 
let's let's leave this one open. So we got our reference up top here. This is where we came from. We have some certificates. Reloaded-games.eu. We know that the Chinese have previously gone after gaming companies. Is this related? Okay, VPS associated with this as well back in 2016. Blogfunnel.xyz. Not sure on this one. Um, we do have some hashes. Again, because they're proof point, I don't have a subscription there. They're not as interesting to me. The U-types is interesting. The my dynamic DNS.rocks is interesting. Um, we know that the Chinese have used dynamic DNS for some of their operations before. Um, I'm not sure about this IP. I'm gonna I'm gonna move on temporarily um, and, and keep the tab open. All right, so let's keep rolling things out here. Um, park so we don't care. Again, park so we don't care. No new hashes. Let's let this one finish loading. Parked on that one, parked on that one. Just, just in case something went haywire. Okay. All right, we have some more IP addresses here on the about. Uh, we have our non-routable, uh, but we do have this 91 address. And of course we have good old Google, uh, something that the actors will do every now and then just to kind of park their command and control when they're uh, not running operations. So we got what we needed uh, from here. I'm gonna move on. Let's look at this 91 address really quick. Pretty extensive history. Uh, not a lot of information going on here. So it looks like on the, in 2017, uh, July, it was only for five days that we observed this domain on this IP address. And since then, it's got this WF verification.gdn. I'm gonna expand this one out. The other ones are definitely way older, uh, probably not as uh, interesting given that we're looking at an IP address and the reporting here is from this year. Um, might be a stretch to kind of include this, but let's take a look anyway. So we got our IP address we've already accounted for. We got Proton Mail, some Whois information. Pivoted on the email address and the phone number to see what we have there. No known subdomains, uh, DNS-wise. CloudNS.net, kind of a deviation if this was the actor since they've been using Namecheap. Um, so let's move on to the who is information, see if we find anything of interest. We're either getting a lot of results back or these things are under some load, or the Hangout is essentially crushing my browser. When in doubt, refresh. And when all else fails, let's use Google. All right, nothing there. Mm, not going to be as interesting. Okay, so we're getting a little bit of failure here, which is unfortunate, but live demo and this happens. So normally what I would do is I'd look to see how much uh, frequency uh, or how many items are associated to this email address and this phone number um, as a means to kind of help me understand how important it is to me. If it uh, only has a, a number of other connections, a small amount, I might... I will, I will rank it as more important. Um, and if it has a massive amount of results, then I will uh, mark it as less interesting and won't spend my time with it. Unfortunately, because we're not able to make the pivot here, I'm not quite certain what I would do. So I'll leave one of them open in the event that it does eventually pan out. Maybe we're having some issues on our, on our back end. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark it as time overlap, uh, I'm going to put it at suspicious, and there's also the PDNS overlap as well. In the event that, you know, things come back to normal, um, I'll have this at least categorized, um, 
And then let's add it to our project so that we don't forget about it in the future. Still no dice. All right, well, we'll close it out for now and we'll come back to it later. So this 185 um, is of interest to me. I'm gonna put this as suspicious just because there is a slight time period overlap. I just forgot the tag that I used there. Let's refresh our project and see what we got. So time overlap. We'll do the same thing here. EDNS overlap. Market is suspicious. It's our project. I don't want to go adding the rest of these quite yet. Um, I'm going to run them in the background just to see the ones that don't appear completely random. You know, what can, what if anything we can infer off of them? God, I'm crushing my browser. Not too much interesting. Hashes, useless. So this is using Namecheap. Privacy guards, not much of a help. A lot of subdomains off this, as we expect on a dynamic DNS provider. Who is is going to be useless. That one's going to cause us issues as well. Let's see. Subdomains here is interesting. The Telegram potential. Uh, Typo, uh, typo squat, but mimic of the Telegram service, Messenger. No good on the who is. Okay, so what we're going to do, um, take a look at this last one, another dynamic DNS service, who is, is useless, subdomains, useless, not much else. Uh, we added this to the project, so we, we and we categorized it as such. Uh, we're going to move on just to kind of save ourselves some time. Let's go through exploring this dynamic DNS uh, website really quick. We have some components here that are running on it. Uh, it's running Apache, mod SSL, PHP, okay. Uh, we have a redirection uh, over to this website. We have a lot of uh, subdomains as expected. It's a dynamic DNS provider. Um, not completely convinced this is in our like interests, but Let's take this 103 address because we know that we've seen a 103 address uh, used before, a different part of the world, but could be of interest. All right, so we have this website, which was redirected from this dynamic DNS page. Hasn't been around too long. Uh, does have certificates, so it's starting to feel similar. Using a different provider, though, um, for the certificates. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's not related. Subdomain, similar subdomains, though not terribly uh, uncommon. Components, I wouldn't expect to see uh, YouTube and Google search, double click, like ads, Akamai. I would not expect to see that on something that is malicious. That's kind of throwing it off a little bit here. Uh, especially like the fact that we're seeing an iframe reference to YouTube, but this website might potentially just be uh, promoting some sort of service. Um, not completely sure what it would be. Let's look at the cookies. Cookies again, you know, these are very specific cookies uh, to specific services. Let's run pivots on them, see if we find anything interesting here. Yeah, 76,000 websites, this cookie is completely useless and it's suggestive that they're running a service that is potentially popular or something that is common. Uh, maybe it's an ad provider and they're throwing this cookie out there um, or some sort of affiliate program, but not too interested here. Okay, so the fact that I'm seeing cookies that are widely distributed um, isn't completely a reason for me to discredit this website. But the fact that I'm seeing, you know, these potential like ad technologies running there leads me to believe it's less interesting to me. Um, not using Namecheap. Uh, so 
kind of interesting time period sort of overlap. If we look at open source intelligence, apparently it's referencing this website, some sort of Facebook page. Okay, so this might make more sense here. Um, this looks like some sort of gaming server, which could explain um, a little bit of what we're seeing. So oh, there's the reference to our website. So the most unbelievable server, some sort of community here founded in 2010. I don't know if they have any videos. Okay, so it looks like this might just be a gaming page which could explain why we're seeing components related to online videos, um, ads, and other you know, specific technologies for content delivery networks. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark this as not being interesting to me. Um, same, with the, same with the dynamic DNS because it's essentially seen redirecting to it. Um, let's look at this 103 IP address. Looking at the timelines here, investbusinesspro.info. Okay, maybe. Let's look at this cert, some local host cert, not gonna bother with it. Um, so this IP address was seen with that dynamic DNS page that we know um, Risk IQ has classified as phishing. So maybe it was compromised in the past, um, but then it redirects over to that uh, dedicated web page, which we no, at least has a Facebook page for some gaming servers. Uh, not particularly interesting. The time frame on this Invest Business Pro suggests that maybe um, this infrastructure was the previous one used by that dynamic DNS, and now um, someone else has taken it over. This Invest Business Pro So I'm gonna I'm gonna open that back up because I meant to pivot on it. Take a quick cursory look at that, but you know, as we can see here, doing these projects, um, it becomes very easy to start rabbit holding down a particular avenue. And so, how I got here was I was looking at a subdomain for something that we knew was malicious. I pivoted on the passive DNS. I got some additional infrastructure, uh, which then led to more infrastructure, which now I'm like two tiers out. So I'm already getting pretty tenuous as to whether or not these are related. I'm gonna pivot on this just to see if there's any open source intelligence or other data that suggests that this could be interesting. No OSINT components running Apache, okay. Um, doesn't appear to be using Namecheap. But uh, it is interesting here, I wouldn't expect a malicious actor or one that is you know, doing the Chinese state sponsor espionage to set up all these SPF records unless they plan on doing phishing. Gut feeling on this is that um, it's some sort of like self-help, get rich quick scheme, um, which is also configured to send out email as well from these given locations. Um, we can see infrastructure wise, we're now no overlap uh, to the existing uh, content that we've already explored apart from that Malaysian address. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk away from this one because I think it's a rabbit hole that I don't feel like exploring. It's probably not related. So we'll close these out. Um, and we know at least that there is overlap with this update.wsmconf.com. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add that into our project. Got our chem scale, which we haven't quite explored yet. Let's uh, go over there. Oh, but what are the actual domain? So you can see here, this is pretty just tedious and monotonous work. A lot of the running queries over and over again, looking for connections, trying to observe the time periods, looking for unique nuggets of interest that are not frequently occurring. I'm gonna refresh our project um, and see what else we can start looking at here in the meantime. Okay. So we know that we have subdomain usage here on this address, that's how we originally found it. We have some host pairs. So nothing interesting, just referencing the dub dub dub. We already added our subdomains in here, so we'll explore those in a moment. Got some cookies here that could be of interest. So the PHP sesh ID not gonna be of interest, it's way too frequently occurring. Cookies, however, uh, these are not frequently occurring. 
we can see here they occurred during the time in which this was resolving to this IP address. So what I'm going to do is these cookies are unique. Add them to the project just in case this is related. I feel like it is given the naming. You know, my gut says it's related right away simply because it matches that other website that we know is malicious. Um, who is? We actually have some contact information here. So when was this done? This is recent. Okay, so reporting recent. Not quite sure if this is still related or not. We have some gaps in coverage here. Um, and that email address. So we got a, this is, this looks like a parked page here. I'm going to mark this. Okay, so let's walk away for a moment. Let's, let's take some stock of what we have. We have IP address overlap uh, with this domain to something that we know has a bunch of other stuff on there. So here's our, here's our resolution. So all of these were kind of suspect because this one uh, is definitely malicious and this is also malicious. And we have these things that appear to be related in naming. We know that this one was kind of referenced at least in open source intelligence as being related. Uh, we know that the IP address was used as a command and control server. So all of this infrastructure is interesting to me. This one's parked. We're not going to go explore it. These are GoDaddy IP addresses. They're likely going to be parked as well. So what I'm trying to determine right now is we have a who is record from June 15th of this year, which is recent, suggesting maybe these actors used this previously and bothered not to renew it. And now we have some R. Wilcox essentially responsible for this. So I'm curious. I mean, this looks like some legit information. I'm going to pivot on it. The name servers don't match the profile. Trying to see here, do we have some previous information? The 2017, you know, we had Robert Wilcox was here again. Now this one looks more interesting. 2016, this chem scale mail.ru with a bunch of fake looking information. It's not indexed on our side uh, because it is an old record, but this may be what's tied to the actors if it is malicious. Let's see if uh, who is is going to cooperate across the board. And maybe maybe I just picked a bad time to do a live stream here on these uh, on our who is service as a test. So let's go run a, a query on a on a who is email means riskiq.net. Okay, that's unfortunate. It looks like our Whois service is down during the time of me live streaming. Uh, again, we can fall back to Google here. This looks like a pretty, pretty normalized looking uh, email address. The ew3.com looks like some sort of website registrar. You know, here's all of our information before. Um, let's flip over some other services that may have some working who is at the moment. In the meantime, we'll kill these off. Apologize, folks, for not having that working. Uh, we'll have to take a look while we ticket. Let that load in the background. I'm not quite sure how related this is. It certainly looks related. It appears that maybe it might have been related back in 2016. So maybe these GoDaddy addresses could be of interest. We'll pivot on them just in case. So I think they'll probably crush my browser. The It's still weird to me that our services and VirusTotal and other services are picking up chemscale.com, resolving to an IP address that we know has had malicious activity. So I do find that to be a little bit strange. Most domains have fewer than... Well, the hell does this mean okay this is silly okay so 896 domains associated with this email i don't think this is related i think if these things are 
If this domain is related to these bad actors, uh, certainly looks like it, um, then it appears to have been taken over by somebody around that 2016, 2017 handoff period, um, which may be related, or it's a complete front and they own a lot of web pages. But that doesn't appear to be the, the common thing that we see with um, espionage actors. So we got a parked page here. This is, uh, again, going back to the 2016 IP addresses for that. Not interesting. Market as such. Walk away. The GoDaddy page, a lot of frequently occurring stuff, not high volume, but lengthy history. Uh, I'm going to mark this as parked as well, given the amount of resolutions here, and not spend time with it. So what did I get out of this? It's a mystery. Uh, we got passive DNS overlap. Uh, we know that this IP address has been used as a command and control. Maybe it's a hosting provider that's been compromised um, or a hosting server. And the chem scale just has an unfortunate side effect of looking exactly uh, similar to the known bad and malicious infrastructure. Not entirely sure, but we're going to go through and run uh, run the, run those to ground anyway. So now at this point, I have a lot more artifacts inside of my investigation. I want to look at the ones that we added for PDNS overlap. We got those addresses. Let's take a look at these. So again, the mystery domain here, I'm not entirely sure if it's of interest. Oh my God. I'm actually gonna, I'm not gonna kill my browser. And I'm gonna exit these out before they can load. Let's focus on a couple at a time so I don't have too many threads running. This is just bringing the browser to its knees, especially with the uh, Hangout running. So I'm gonna, I'm interested right now in just exploring just this one, the update.wsm.coff.com. Hmm. Not sure what's going on. Let's give it a second to load. I can't tell if my network is being completely saturated or you're just having problems here. Okay, so not sure what was up with that. Can't tell if my network's being completely dumped on or what. Uh, let's give it a second and see if it comes back. Meantime, uh, I guess for anybody that's watching, if there's any questions, feel free to uh, use the group chat on the uh, on the broadcasting as well. Okay, looks like we might be back in business here. So let's try this again. There we go. Okay, there might have just been a network interruption on my side, I'm trying to load up way too much at once. So here's our update.wsmcoff.com. If you remember, we had this IP address that had an overlap in subdomain usage. And then we had this 103 IP address that had um, previous reporting associated with it. And so we got some other subdomains here. I want to mark these um, as suspicious, put subdomains. And I'm gonna add these to my project. And we have that, that same open source intelligence. We got some uh, PHP running, Apache running. We have PHP session ID at least being deployed on this. So while we're here, let's take a look at the subdomains. So 
So we're not entirely sure if this is part of, we know that has overlap, this might be our actors. Um, so we want to explore the subdomains here just in case. Okay. So we're seeing the same name cheap pattern, which is nice. Uh, got a redirection from the base domain over to dub dub dub. Uh, our same cookie. Well, let's take a look at this passive DNS. So at this point in time, we're like second order out off of infrastructure we know about. There's like a loose connection here from some other open source intelligence for the uh, temp periscope guys. So this is disheartening. Uh, looks like another parked page. Mark this. Nothing else was useful here. Vietnamese address. Nothing else. Of, let's make sure. Nothing new on the uh, OSINT. So this is interesting. Um, you know, pivoting on this Vietnamese address, uh, we do have this AC dot trouble date dot com. So if this WSMCOF dot com address is related to our bad actors, the KC subdomain two letter concept kind of interesting. It's, I wouldn't, I would, it's a stretch to call it a pattern, but there's a slight pattern there. And this AC trouble date dot com is interesting to me. So fairly unique IP address. Potentially what we're looking at here is the KC and API subdomains were maybe used uh, to actually host an attack or do something with an attack. So I'm going to pivot on this, uh, this trouble date dot com. And just see right away if this is anything of interest. This to me feels like it could be related. No more hosting history. We do have Namecheap. We do have QQ back in 2015. And then it went privacy protected. I'm not completely certain if this is related, but I'm going to mark it down because it is fairly unique and it does fit a pattern. And it does fit a timeline. Um, and that's enough to at least consider it. So let's mark it down um, and make sure that we get this covered. So suspicious, we want to say second order uh, subdomain pattern EDNS overlap. We want to try to preserve as much information as we can as we're going through this because as you can see, we're we're now pulling in information that's definitely not, not directly correlated to the original starting point. Um, so let's mark that. Add to our project. Nothing else of interest here. Oh, did I make sure to? We can try added the IP address to our project as well. It is the one cumbersome thing about the interface is that it can be, uh, sometimes you forget to add things to projects and be the difference between alert and no alert. I want to make sure that I add that IP address in. Okay. Let's look at this AC trouble date. One resolution, who is this useless? No open source intelligence. A lot of the same looking subdomains. It could be of interest here. I'm not completely certain. We can come back to this later. Let's flip over that uh, info uh, subdomain. 127.001, common technique that actors will use to park their, uh, their hosts. Same open source intelligence, not much else here. So unfortunately, no, no real information. Um, but the 127 is suggestive, at least in my world, of you know potentially turned off for operations but gearing up at, at some point in time this could come on or maybe uh, risk IQ has not observed it yet api we have that same i believe ip address let's pivot on it just in case I suppose i could have just refreshed the results yeah this one's already been categorized so we do have this 185 romanian address from 2017 could fit a potential time period Open source intelligence, same blog again, nothing else. 
So let's see here. This might be the one that we've already seen. Yeah. Looks like it might be experiencing a little bit of network delay again. All right, uh, let's give it a moment. That was loading up. Maybe it's this particular result is just really heavy on the, uh, the information. Oh, there we go. Okay. Apologies for the intermittent uh, network delays here. So we have the overlap on a couple other interesting looking domains. Let's see, some hashes here. Not as interesting. I'm not sure here. Uh, low amount of res uh, resolutions. Uh, nothing to date. You know, this is really fringe. I'm going to categorize it as like suspect, fringe, PDNS, overlap. Um, and we'll add it to the project just in case. I'm suspect of adding the rest of these because now we're like third order out, so it's probably not as interesting. All right, let's kind of take stock of where we're at here. I'm going to quickly go over, just make sure I covered everything on these IP addresses. I like to kind of revisit, uh, because I have unlimited queries, to, to sort of revisit the infrastructure and ensure that I've covered all my bases. Um, yep, so we went through this one. We looked at all the data here. 185, we had our chem scale hashes were not interesting. Um, okay. Not interesting. Okay. Whoops. I'd say we're up to date as it comes to that. So we have most of our infrastructure accounted for here. And at this point, because I have a project, uh, as alerts come in, I will start to see them. So if the infrastructure changes in the future, I'll, I'll get an indication of that. I'm gonna filter down domains. Um, I guess what I could do at this point is explore the trouble date uh, subdomains that might be of interest. Um, let's make sure we're seeing everything here. We have this, well, that's not the one I wanted. The hyper host. These look like VPS related uh, domains, less interesting to me. It's still worth checking out. A lot of subdomains off of this. I wonder if this is some sort of DNS provider. Bearsigngrs.com. Okay, this is probably not. Not of interest here. Same thing. Okay. So at this point, I think we've built out this infrastructure quite well. Let's let's for amusement, let's click through all these really quick, see if we find anything else of interest here. This is definitely some fringe infrastructure, but uh, could be of interest. So while that's, uh, while, you know, make sure we kind of allow each of these to load, certainly because I've been having network issues. If I let these other ones go through, um, I think it's important to note here. So we started off with four domains and we now have at least 57 artifacts here from certificates to IP addresses to related domains to what appears to be some previous open source intelligence. Um, a lot of good leads that we can start running down. Certainly may not be all related, but that's the beauty of performing an investigation is that's what we're trying to figure out. Uh, and so I mentioned this before, but as new resolutions come in or we're watching specific things, 
we'll get alerts uh, inside of this tab. Um, and in order to see this, you actually have to have uh, own the project yourself, or is it, it has to be part of a group organization. So that's a good um, way of staying on top of how a particular actor's infrastructure might be evolving. Let's quickly just go through and explore what we have here. Um, you know that who is is not that interesting. Subdomains we already got, no good data accounted for. Um, let's click these. These could be of interest. IP addresses already accounted for. Accounted for. Okay, so dub 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 reaching out to this page. It's running Nginx, Microsoft IIS is a different set of technology than we've been seeing on the actor infrastructure, which was Apache. Doesn't mean it's not related, but not that there's a deviation. Um, Namejeep's still here. We have some other registrar services being leveraged as well. Let's look at those IPs. Shrinking, shining cooks. Not a lot of unique stuff. Well, there, I mean, it's a pretty significant amount of unique domains here. They don't appear to be following a solid pattern. Um, so it's a little bit hard to tell if it's related or not. Again, because this is fringe, I probably wouldn't add these in. Um, or I would add them into a separate project and really like pay attention to these over time. I'm not going to add them in right now. So the only other domain on this one is this pestcorner.net. Uh, and that's back from 2011, 2014, probably not related to this at all. So this IP address doesn't appear to have anything else of interest. Uh, mark it as zero. Let's click these other ones that we observed. Again, we're out on fringe third like level infrastructure not likely to find anything that is as useful. Um, now, people ask me, well, okay, you know, if you're not, con like, how do you know that it's associated with these actors? Oh, usually I don't, unless I have uh, some malware that suggests uh, otherwise. But what I'm seeing here is that there's not, I mean, it would, if I were to go, if I were inside of an organization um, and I was running defense and I had the ability to wholesale block things, um, I would block this. So I'm conducting the investigation from a standpoint of, is it re actor related? If I were doing this from a defense perspective for an organization, I'd probably go start blocking a lot of these fringe items that I'm talking about, not necessarily the IPs, because you can see this one appears to be parked. Um, but I would certainly like that, you know, the trouble uh, date, uh, the trouble data or whatever it is, uh, domain, I would, you know, even though it is fringe, I would block it anyway, just to be on the safe side to see if it is related. They're parked. They're parked. Okay. Last one here. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother with this. A lot of park stuff. And you can see here, I have a previous project where I had already set this up um, where I wasn't doing the live stream and added these in just in case. So, you know, I don't know how long we spent here together on this live stream. Uh, but, you know, in that short period of time, we took something where it was known uh, four domains and blew them out into 58 artifacts, including some unique cookie names, some IP addresses, some SSL certificates, some additional subdomains and infrastructure. We did find uh, at least some connection to other open source intelligence uh, that, that was handy in piecing together uh, some previously reported infrastructure that FireEye did not include in the report. Uh, and so in terms of success, I think this is the closest that we're going to get. Um, and like I said, in the future, I'm gonna continue to watch the alerts tab uh, on the project. Unfortunately, um, for this project, at least, uh, this was not something that, that uh, resulted in an immense amount of knowledge. But, you know, you can't win them all. Uh, and, you know, this is just the, the byproduct of doing things live. 
uh, that you don't always get the most interesting things, um, you know, shown to you. I do want to apologize for those who were watching or watched the recording that the Who Is service appeared to be uh, messed up at the time of running this. Uh, I did at least try some level of due diligence to run a Google search and look at some other providers to see if we were looking at some uh, interesting uh, or unique information. It did not appear that way. So I don't think that we've lost too much by not adding that into the project or being able to see the results. Um, but at this point, you know, if I were in a defensive position, like I was saying at an organization, I probably would have added some of that other fringe traffic uh, to the project. And what I would do is typically download all these indicators, uh, either through the API or through the web interface. And I would probably just block all of this or uh, put some alerts inside of my network to identify any traffic that's surfing to any of these resources so that uh, if I felt that I might be impacted, I could actually raise that awareness internally. Um, and so I'm going to stop sharing and go back to my camera here where you can see me. Uh, and that's that's largely it. Um, you know, first time doing this live, didn't know really what to expect. Uh, certainly not sure whether or not we'll do this again. Um, you know, I think it's an interesting experiment uh, for people to be able to see what goes through my mind as I'm conducting an investigation and making pivots. Uh, as you saw, at least as I went through this, um, it can not, it's not necessarily extremely complex. Uh, I'm, only, I'm really just uh, running clicks and pivots inside of a tool that we wrote um, on data that we own. But you can see the complexity in the fact that we'll start with one indicator and then we'll end up on another one and another one and another one um, and quickly end up down a rabbit hole that may not be related. So I think anyone who's watching this, um, you may not necessarily, you may be inside of your head thinking, man, I'm so confused how we got to some of that infrastructure because you know it was hard to follow. Um, and I would just say that that is a byproduct of doing this analysis. Uh, Steve and I will sometimes shift over to Multigo uh, in order to visualize this in a, in a better way. I had referenced a second order, third order uh, as I was going through the infrastructure. And that's just because my brain is essentially thinking about it as I do a pivot, trying to keep track of state of how far away I am from the original recording. The farther away that you get out, the less likely or less useful those indicators are going to be. Um, and so I think that uh, that just happens with practice over time. Um, for the viewers, it says that there's three of them. I appreciate you kind of sticking around. Uh, but you know, if there's no questions uh, that are being listed in the chat, I'm essentially going to stop the broadcast here. Uh, we'll wrap this one up, and then you know, maybe when I'm seeing Steve next week, we'll do another one of these pending uh, some interesting reporting that comes out. Uh, maybe we'll go do some of the analysis on top of the uh, Ticketmaster breach information that we saw. So for those who uh, joined, I appreciate you following along with the experiment. I hope that this was useful. And for anybody who's watching the video afterwards, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out directly to me um, or our support channels uh, at Risk IQ or the in-app chat at Passive Total. Uh, and we're happy to answer your questions and elaborate more on our uh, analysis techniques. So thanks.